pick up one of those batteryless jump starters for your car, tractor, or whatever. Um, I'm just curious of what's inside and how they work. And I, I picked up a uh, defective one, a uh, Reservo. And it's a, uh, it's an RT300 or some, uh, RZ300, I'm sorry. And I got it, and it was defective when I got it, so got it relatively cheap. And thought I'd tear it apart and take a look inside and see what goes wrong in these things. And actually, in this one, the electronics are fine. It was one of the capacitors were open. So I don't know how old this is and what it's been through. But I uh, thought I'd play around with it and maybe repair it and see how things go. Just uh, another quick video on my curiosity that I end up going down a rabbit hole and end up spending more money on uh, experimenting than I plan to. But hey, how are you going to learn? So let's take a look at this. And I've got it open on the bench. I've already got it taken apart. They just had the screws on and uh, removed the guts. And uh, put the, uh, had a rubber case around it also to protect it, I guess in case you dropped it or something. But uh, from what I hear, they work pretty good. So let's take a look on the bench. And uh, I did find one bad cap and wanted to test the electronics out before I went, went any farther. And it seems to work OK as far as the electronics go. So we'll order some caps and uh, see if we can repair it. And uh, that'll be another video because it's going to take a while to get the caps from China. I'm just looking to buy the, spend the least amount I can. And this one has uh, a pack that has five 500 farad caps in series, so that's 100 farad. And uh, so we'll take a look here in the bench and uh, real quick and see what's inside. So the issue was the bad capacitor. One of the capacitors was open on this. It was actually the very first one. Uh, so I stuck a charge on it on the other four with a one amp 12 volt charger in the port and the charging port. And the electronics seemed to be working and it is charging. Well, what I thought was interesting, um, because this pack is rated at 10 volts, 100 farads. So that means there's five 500 farad capacitors in series. And, but it's rated at 10 volts, so they want to be conservative. They're thinking be on the safe side, two volts per cell. I don't know, or excuse me, per, per capacitor. But I did notice there are several lights indicating the voltage on the front panel. You can see it starts at uh, 5 volts, 7 volts, 9 volts, 2 volt increments there, uh, 11 volts, and then it goes down to 1 volt increments, 12, 13, and 14. Well, I noticed that while charging, the second LED, which is marked 7 volts, came on at 4 volts. And the third LED, which is marked 9 volts, came on at 7 volts. The fourth LED, which is marked 11 volts, came on at 9 volts. So you see a pattern here that they may not be charging this up completely to 14, as it says, but I wouldn't know till I replace all those capacitors. And I'm guessing that the fifth LED, which is marked 12 volt, is going to come on at 10 volts. Or near there. It was actually just a little bit over, like uh, 0.2 volts over each till it came on. The LEDs changed. So, because 14 volts would be, you know, rather high, 
and I noticed there's no balancing between these capacitors on the packs here pack either. It's just straight series, but I would imagine because this wouldn't be used that much that maybe it wouldn't make a whole lot of difference. I don't know. So I'm going to let this run up to a little over 10 volts, which would be about 2.5 volts per capacitor on each one of those four caps left and see what happens and see if the uh, 12 volt light should come on and so that would be 10 volts so if that's the case and then the increments change one volt at a time on the scale goes 11 12 13 14 i would think that they they might be close to the limits of what those capacitors are able to handle which would be 2.7 volts each and that's up or around what 13 volts or so so i was just curious but the electronics seem to be working fine and it seems to be charging so i'm going to see let this go for a little bit longer here and see what happens when it hits a little over 10 volts uh, just out of curiosity then i'll discharge them slowly but I have to order some caps. And you notice uh, it's interesting. They have aluminum bus bars connecting each of those capacitors. And you might wonder how the uh, wires are soldered on. Well, they're plated with copper on the bottom on the two ends where they have the wires. And that's how they did it. They soldered on. So, And I, I guess it must work. This is, I think this is the first version of this uh, Reservo. They have a newer one that's called a Mini. It's smaller. And I suppose as the capacitor technology got better, they can get them made smaller. But we're almost hitting the 10 volt mark. We're going to see what happens here when we get up there. And it should be around 10.2 volts that. fifth LED should come on. So I stopped it at 10.5 because I only have four caps in series on there. Uh, I guess I won't be able to see the voltages until I replace the caps. I'll have to order some from and get cheapest places, China over on AliExpress, so I would imagine that's going to take a while to get them, so this will be put on the back burner until then. But uh, let me disconnect everything here. The uh, notice here on the back, they've got this aluminum coated with copper so they could solder on it. But this board is basically um, it's going to have a DC DC converter because there are two inputs down here one for USB to charge and one for 10 amp if you if you want to put a 10 amp uh, 12 volt charge on there and and a couple MOSFETs I assume is for charging and this seems to be the output section on the board here <clears throat> there is a power relay which I assume how these things work once they're charged you turn them on and I would assume that uh, if it sees a direct short because a, a low battery or a dead battery has a really high resistance so of course the starter is going to be like almost a dead short so it's going to sense that and it's going to fire this relay and of course dump the charge into the uh, starter to start to turn the car over and I think a lot of these packs have to be lying about the charge capacity um, 
I mean, I can't imagine uh, unless there are a newer technology, maybe an ultra capacitor pack that's gonna is gonna dump a thousand amps. But I think they're probably telling a little more of a truth on this one because it says the starting current is uh, 300 amp. I can believe that more, but that's briefly for a few seconds. But I'll I'll reuse these. Uh, Actually, I'm going to order capacitors that have the screw tops on them. They'll fit in the case. I did a little bit of measurements and get some more shrink wrap to cover up the whole pack, but I can disassemble these fairly easy and reuse that again, or maybe if I find some copper and just make some new ones. But this seemed to do the job. And they tell you in the instructions on this particular model not to wait 15 minutes before you do another charge between two charges. Um, supposedly you're supposed to get five starts out of out of one of these, but you have to wait 15 minutes on a full charge. You're supposed to wait 15 minutes between charges. So uh, other than that, that, that piques my curiosity. And this one has, uh, this one has a particular interesting uh, feature that I'm not sure I would uh, want to do it that way. It has a glow switch on it. And all, there's two functions there. Some uh, cars, if the battery voltage is too low, it won't let you do anything. And they suggest, this is crazy, they suggest pulling the positive terminal off of the battery if that's the case connecting the jump starter up onto the positive ter terminal turning it on starting the car and then without disconnected your jump starter put that positive terminal back on the battery i don't think i'd want to want to do that and also in that mode they're saying it, pressing the glow um well will uh the diesels have the uh little glow heaters in them on the cylinders to warm the cylinder up for a few seconds. So when this is all done and I have this project finished and have this repaired, I'm curious um, if hitting that glow switch will actually activate the output on the uh, jumpers there. Take some measurements on discharge capacity. So other than that, Y'all have a good day.